morning, San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordering Russian nuclear deterrent forces on alert. We have the latest on the situation overseas. A man is rushed to the hospital after he's stabbed during an argument. The details next. And back here at home, Sarah Spivey telling us there is sunshine on the horizon. The first time we may see the sun since Tuesday. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, February 27th. I'm so excited that it's 40 degrees. And did the mist stop? Yes. Sarah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, guys. Take a look behind me. What are Ooh. we seeing there? We're seeing blue skies. The sun is coming out in San Antonio. Clearing line moving through the Alamo City as we speak. It is still chilly though out there. It's 40 degrees and we do have a stout wind from the north at 20 miles per hour gusting up to 28 miles per hour. So a breezy start to our day, but I don't know. I'm so excited that we're seeing the sun. The first time I've been this excited for uh, sunshine in quite some time because again, it's been cloudy since Wednesday here in San Antonio. We're seeing skies clear. Temperatures are going to be on the rise. We'll be at 51 at noon and 60 degrees for the high temperature today. The last time we were this warm was Tuesday and Tuesday we got up to 88 degrees. So this is the warmest we've been since Tuesday and uh, those winds will be with us throughout the day though, uh, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? We're seeing those skies clear. It's going to be warm in the afternoon. Well, at least pleasant in the afternoon and then in the week ahead, we're going to have beautiful spring like weather. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about what that looks like as we end uh, February and start March. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this hour with breaking news out of Russia. The Associated Press reporting that President Vladimir Putin ordering Russian nuclear deterrent forces on high alert amid tensions over the West over his invasion of Ukraine. So speaking at a meeting with his top officials, Putin asserted on Sunday that leading NATO powers had made, quote, aggressive statements along with the West imposing hard hitting financial sanctions against Russia, including the president himself. All right. So President Putin ordering the Russian defense minister and the chief of the military's general staff to put the nuclear deterrent deterrent forces in a quote unquote special regime of combat duty. We're going to have much more on the invasion and what is happening in Ukraine throughout the show. All right, before right now, we have the latest happening here at home. San Antonio police searching for the suspect believed to be responsible for stabbing a man in the stomach and then taking off. So this was a situation just after midnight on North New Braunfels Avenue it happened at a taco truck. Now, investigators telling us the victim and suspect they were arguing when the Suspect allegedly stabbed the victim. Now that man who was stabbed, he was able to get away from the attacker. He drove himself to the hospital. At last check, he was in serious condition. And at last check, no suspect has been arrested yet. Ukraine's health minister saying that nearly 200 people have died and more than 1,000 wounded in the Russian invasion. Today, European Union foreign ministers are expected to hold an urgent meeting to consider more action against Moscow. All right, so in Russia, small anti-war protests continuing in big Russian city, St. Petersburg, along with other surrounding areas. Police actually detaining some demonstrators. Uh, there's a full team of reporters on the ground in that region covering the crisis from all angles. Here's ABC's Ian Panel. This morning, intense battles reported in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, as Russian forces enter the city. But Ukrainian troops mounting what appears to be a strong defense. Heavy overnight bombardment was followed by what the Ukrainian Defense Ministry says is two armed units pushing into Kharkiv today. One appears to have been disabled amid social media videos of street fighting. At least 240 civilian casualties have been reported, including 64 dead, although the true number is likely higher. The Russian attacks also focusing on key infrastructure. We filmed a massive fire burning south of Kyiv, lighting up the night sky after an oil refinery was struck. Although Russian forces are more powerful, Ukrainian troops and civilians are putting up a stiff fight. But the Kremlin this morning claiming more than 400 Ukrainian service members have surrendered. The country's president, Zelensky, refusing to leave the capital, rallying his countrymen, Ukraine. saying Ukraine. we will keep fighting. And if babies come into this world, even under shelling and fire, then the enemy has no chance in this war. U.S. officials saying that more than 50 percent of the 150,000 Russian troops amassed outside of 
Ukraine are now inside the country. In Kyiv, the military and civilian volunteers lining up to receive weapons, ready to dig in and fight to protect the capital. We want to make sure that uh, the world knows that Russia's main target is right now to take the city. Under curfew and the threat of bombardment at any time, Ukraine 24 anchors moving their reporting to a parking garage. All major news networks now working together. And for many trapped in Kyiv, life has moved underground. Whole families finding shelter in underground metro stations. This is now a nationwide effort. Alina Mishkor is baking bread for the troops. She spoke to us from inside her darkened home, leaving the lights off for safety. If we are attacked from air, we actually have no shelter because uh, we live in the private house and it's, it's very old. It, it wouldn't stand the shots. We do have some breaking news according to the Associated Press. Ukraine's president's office says Ukrainian envoys will meet with Russian diplomats as Russian troops draw closer to Kiev, and we'll keep you updated on the situation. But locally, some help is on the way to people in Ukraine thanks to a local bakery and hundreds of its customers. The owners of Leica Cheesecake and Espresso in Alamo Heights put the word out on social media and San Antonio responded in a big way. They began lining up outside the business on Broadway as early as 9 a.m. yesterday, waiting for a chance to buy those baked goods. The owners decided to donate all the day's proceeds to the people of Ukraine. It's a cause that is near and dear to one of them who is a native of Ukraine herself. I am very, very grateful for all the support that we received. And um, I expected that people would come and they would support, but uh, not in this quantities, honestly. <laughs> well, the bakery owners say the huge turnout came as a sweet surprise, but it was a bit overwhelming. So going forward, they suggest that people, they want to donate, uh, they want to help out just simply to make a donation. And their cheesecake, out of this world. All right, so city council approving contracts for community partners, implementing the $200 million SA Ready to Work program. The goal of this program is to place more than 28,000 people into either certification or degree programs and get almost 16,000 into high quality in demand jobs. And the exciting part is the launch of the program is set for April. So joining us in today's leading SA segment is Michael Ramsey, He's director of the initiative. Good morning, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, happy to be here. We've been covering this program since its inception. Now that it was finally approved by city council, explain what it can mean for the future of our community. SA Ready to Work is a unique program on the scale of which no other municipality in the country is making this type of an investment in its people. Um, SA Ready to Work has the potential to provide the talent base necessary for continued economic growth for companies that exist here today in San Antonio, as well as attracting new and emerging companies with good high quality jobs for its people. Um, so we believe that that alignment between the skills that those companies are looking for and the talent base that we have here in San Antonio could be a game changer economically for our community. So Mr. Ramsey, San Antonio is growing, you know, when it comes to population and technology, we are seeing more and more high tech businesses coming into our city. So how does this program help get people ready for that shift in employment needs? As those jobs continue to flood into the San Antonio community, the people who live here have to be equipped with the skills and the education that's necessary to be qualified to fill those jobs. We know that a high quality job is the answer to many of society's ills, such as affordable housing. Having a good high quality job will help make housing more affordable, access to transportation. If you had a good job, you can afford that car. Um, making sure that um, individuals in the community have those access to those training and education programs to be competitive for those jobs when they arrive and the jobs that are already existing here in our community is going to help those segments of the population who have been historically underserved and on the outside of those career pathways to get a leg in and make sure that our talent base here is strong for decades to come. Right, so this program is expected to help thousands and thousands of San Antonians. So make the pitch. Why should someone enter the program and you know, what does that process look like? How long does it take? If you're a citizen here in San Antonio and you've been unemployed or underemployed and you're looking for that pathway to get onto track to getting a career in an in-demand area and high growth, high wage sectors here in our city, call 311. It's as simple as that. And we can pre-register you for the program that starts in April and uh, you'll be assigned once those case management agencies are up live and running um, later on um, this, uh, this spring 
Um, you'll be assigned a case manager who's going to help to coach, mentor, and guide you and help you to navigate through the educational uh, process to make sure that you matriculate through that training and development program in an area that meets your interests, your skills, your aptitude, and is aligned with a good paying job here in San Antonio. Um, that is our commitment to you. And uh, take this opportunity um, to allow the community to wrap its arms of support around you to help you to achieve your goals. And before we let you go, are there any prerequisites for this program for people to get involved? Yeah. You have to be at least 18 years old, uh, permitted to work in the United States, not currently enrolled in college, and I have a household income of less than 250% of the federal poverty level, which is about 33,000 for an individual, about 69,000 for a family of four. Got to be willing to take some assessments so we can figure out where you're at as far as academically and um, committed to completing the program. Um, if you've got that, those pieces um, in your toolbox and uh, you fit that criteria, this program is designed to help you. All right, Mr. Ramsey, it's as easy as calling 311. Yes, sir. All right, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank y'all. Have a great day. You too. And anyone who missed any part of that interview, want to hear more about the program or more of what Mr. Ramsey has to say, we have the whole thing. Just head to ksat.com. Time now, 811, 40 degrees out. A food forest just planted on the south side will provide more than shade, but generations to come. That story straight ahead. And San Antonians coming together in prayer this morning for the people of Ukraine. We are live from San Fernando Cathedral next. Taking a look outside with live cam, 40 degrees at 8:11 this morning. Sarah Spivey saying it's going to be a beautiful day with the sun finally making an appearance since <laughs> Tuesday. It's been hiding from us, but she'll have more on that when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. We've been covering the situation overseas between Ukraine and Russia extensively. And today, happening here at home, prayers for peace in the situation at the San Fernando Cathedral. So Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that mass. Good morning, Jonathan. So what's taking place right now? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, this morning, two special liturgies praying for peace and in Ukraine here at the San Fernando Cathedral. This morning, I did have the opportunity of speaking with Archbishop Gustavo who is in purple vestment today, signifying prayer, solidarity, fasting, and mourning, given the situation in Ukraine. Once again, I did speak with Archbishop, who's presiding over this Sunday morning service. He says typically their vestment is green ahead of Lent, but today the church and the community is gathering in prayer, making special petitions for peace. Right now, those bells tolling, all signifying the well wishes they have for the people in Ukraine and the Ukraine government right now inside a white candle cloth dressed and Ukraine's flag colors. Again, the message here is prayer, solidarity, all for Ukraine. We'll be speaking with the Archbishop in the next half hour and bring you those details. Reporting live from downtown, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, well, as you saw, Jonathan was layered up. It's because it's cold out there. 40 degrees, Sarah Spivey, but... It looked like the sun was coming out. It's cold, but the sun is out. I'm so excited. Take a look at the satellite imagery. You know, we started the early morning hours off with cloud cover, but look at that very well-defined clearing line there that's working its way south. It's already clear through Austin, through Kerrville, and it's working its way through downtown San Antonio right now as we speak. So the southern half of Bear County in clouds, the northern half in complete sunshine. The reason I'm so excited about the sun is because it has been cloudy since uh, the evening hours of Tuesday. We have not seen the sun since Tuesday here in San Antonio. And that's not the only thing we're going to see today. We're going to see the warmest temperatures we've seen since Tuesday, too. So there's a look at the airport looking out there to the west, and you can see that sun out in about 40 degrees at the airport. Winds, though, are breezy today. We're dealing with a wind from the north at 20 miles per hour. Uh, it's gusting up to 28 miles per hour. Wind gusts of 25 to 30 miles per hour are possible early this morning. And as Max and Sarah mentioned, it's still cold out there, even though we're seeing the sun. It's 33 in Kerrville. 39 in Rio Medina, 40 in Hondo, 40 in New Braunfels, 38 in Canyon Lake, 34 in Bandera, 31 in Las Maples, below freezing in Las Maples, and below freezing in Rock Springs early this morning at 30 degrees. 40 in Del Rio, 44 in Catula, and 40 in Beeville. But again, that clearing line is racing to the south, so that by uh, about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock this morning, we're going to have full sun around Bear County, and even our southern counties, uh, southeastern counties, are going to see this full sun by, by about lunch. 
change. Otherwise, a sunny and beautiful day for us. Although it's not going to be warm outside, temperatures will be the warmest they've been since Tuesday. We'll be looking at a high temperature right near 60 degrees around that I-35 corridor and even up into the hill country, 60 degrees for the high. Off to the west toward Del Rio, 66 for the high temperature, 64 in Eagle Pass and down near Laredo, it'll be near 60 degrees as well. So a great day to enjoy the weekend outdoors. The rest of the weekend outdoors, we've been cooped up inside with the chilly and damp weather. Uh, 10 will be at 44. So again, still chilly this morning and even at noon will be in the low to mid 50s. It's still going to be a mostly cool day, but again, 60 degrees is the warmest we've been since Tuesday. North winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. If you have evening plans tonight, bring that jacket with you. It's going to get chilly as soon as the sun sets. Temperatures will fall into the 40s. All right, quiet across the central plains. We've got a high pressure system in place that's moving over Texas as we speak. And so in the week ahead, we're going to have fairly quiet and comfortable weather by Monday. Tomorrow afternoon will be in the mid to upper 60s on Tuesday and Wednesday as that high moves overhead. We'll be looking at 70 degrees for the high temperature and even warmer as we head into the weekend. Now, although the weather is going to be beautiful, the negative side is that we're not going to have any rain and even though we've had damp conditions over the last few days, it really hasn't amounted to much at the airport and we're still dealing with some uh, drought that's expanding in from the west. Severe drought out in Del Rio and in Eagle Pass and even some extreme drought across the Winter Garden region and down near Catulan and Webb County. Here in San Antonio, we're starting to see moderate drought creep on in from the west and again, without any significant rain in the forecast over the next seven days, that drought is probably going to expand, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Take a look at the temperatures tomorrow morning. We are going to see a light freeze. So if you want to keep your plants in for another day, that might be a good idea, but still it's going to be a quick warm up as we see high temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, 66 degrees tomorrow, 70s Tuesday through the end of the week as we start March. March is uh, going to be coming in like a lamb instead of a lion. So very nice out there. Ooh, I like the lamb. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 820, 40 degrees out. A food forest has just been planted on the city's south side. What this is and what it means for our community. Welcome back. The dream of going to college is coming true for some 4,000 school students in Chicago. Hope Chicago, an organization in Chicago that has partnered with 20 colleges and formed students at five public schools that their tuition, room, board, books, and fees will all be paid for. Hope Chicago's initiative that raises funding for college tuition scholarships. All right, some newly planted trees will be providing more than just shade at Padre Park in the city's south side. Volunteers from the Food Policy Council of San Antonio, they planted a food forest. 60 trees anchored into the ground yesterday at the park. Those trees will grow pecans, figs, mulberry, plums, and pears. So the planting event even included an indigenous blessing ceremony from the organization American Indians of Texas. Members of the nonprofit group says the trees planted will thrive in that area. Time now, 824, 40 degrees out. Police are looking for a suspect at this hour after a man is shot on the city's northwest side. We have the story straight ahead. And as the situation continues on in Ukraine, politics coming to the forefront. We have the de details coming up. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, February 27th. We're almost done with February. I know it's your second least favorite month. It's my second least favorite, followed okay. by my first January. But we're about to get into my two favorite, March and April, because hopefully spring will be here soon, but it's not here quite yet, Sarah. Well, it is chilly outside right now, but Sarah, skies are clearing as we speak, and many are seeing the sun for the first time since Tuesday. Let's take a look outside with satellite and temperatures. It is chilly. It's 40 degrees at the airport, but can you see that clearing line of clouds? I can. It's still cloudy near Stinson and in Pleasanton, but there's that line of clouds as it's pushing off to the south. So we're seeing full sun in Hondo, Castroville, Bernie Stage Airfield, New Braunfels, Kerrville. It's cold though out there this morning. Temperatures in the 30s and 40, 40s. And in a wider view here, uh, still fairly cloudy out near Gonzalez and in Carrizo Springs, but everybody is going to see the 
sunshine today. Uh, we'll be looking at clearing skies uh, through about noon. Plenty of sunshine for our counties to the south and to the east of San Antonio as well. Now it is windy. Winds are from the north sustained at 20 miles per hour. That is giving us a bit of a wind chill in the air, but it's still a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside and the final day for the rodeo. So if you're planning on heading to downtown San Antonio to enjoy the rodeo, know it's going to be lovely outside a little on the cool side, but the warmest we've been since Tuesday, so 60 degrees for the high north winds again breezy at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25. The week ahead looks beautiful and a nice change from the damp and dreary weather we've been seeing over the last few days. I'll have a look at that coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Well, another man also drives himself away from danger after he shot an intersection on the northwest side. This happened before 11 last night in the 8700 block of Cinnamon Creek, where it meets Hamilton Wolf Road. Police say the man was shot in the lower leg. He was able to drive himself to an apartment down the road and called police. Now, police say they believe the man was a victim of road rage or a carjacking attempt. All right, big news out of the rodeo. I want to say congratulations to Luke Altman and Styles Patton, the grand champion and reserve grand champion market steer winners from this year's San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Altman on the left winning a grand champion and Patton on the right winning reserve grand champion. Altman Steer bringing in $109,000. And we know the rodeo and stock show, they do a great job with scholarships and helping out education here in and around our community. So congratulations to both. All right, so early voting is over. The March primary is fast approaching. It is happening this Tuesday. And here's the thing. The last day of early voting, it had the highest turnout that we've seen so far this year. Friday alone saw a total of 21,000 people casting their votes. That's about 22% of all the votes cast in the 11 days of early voting. Here's early voting compared to past primary elections. This year, we saw 97,000 early votes. And although that seems like a lot, it's still about 24,000 less than what we saw in 2020. All right, so there's probably a lot of questions out there about voting, about what you need to know. So to make it easier, we consolidated all that information. All you have to do, head to ksat.com. You can pull out your phone, take out the camera app, scan the QR code on the screen right now. You can find a list of polling locations. They're going to be open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday. We also have a sample ballot and all of the election information you need to know takes you right to ksat.com. Now to your morning headlines. One person dead, 13 others injured after a gunman opens fire at a Las Vegas hookah lounge. So Vegas police believe that the shooting actually stemmed from an argument during a party inside the hookah lounge. Investigators believe there may have been two shooters involved, both of which have not yet been caught. Police say the shooting was an isolated situation. Officers in Indianapolis are investigating a shooting at a Jewish community center's gym. Police say two people were taken to the hospital in stable condition after both were shot. Authorities say they do not believe the shooting is a hate crime, but may be connected to disturbance, possibly related to a basketball game. They say the shooting happened during open gym at the center. The shooter ran from the scene. Police are still looking for that person. And a huge drug bust. Investigators say the scent of onions, not enough to conceal the scent of meth from a canine unit. Authorities seizing nearly $3 million worth of illegal drugs hidden inside of a shipment of what was supposed to be onions. A canine unit with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency sniffing out the stash of meth during an investigation at a truck stop at a federal facility in San Diego. Authorities finding nearly 2,000 packages of meth. And here's the thing. It had a street value of an estimated $2.9 million. The packages shaped like onions to blend in with the actual onions in the shipment. Officers arresting the driver, an unidentified Mexican citizen. Detectives in Santa Ana, California are looking for the man who they say stole $1 million worth of COVID-19 tests. They say the man was a manager at a warehouse where the tests were being stored. According to detectives, the manager assessed, accessed the database and had been rerouting 100 separate shipments to have them delivered to his home instead of the warehouse since the end of December up until a few weeks ago. Police are hoping a tip will lead them to the accused manager. Well, now to the latest moves from the Biden administration. More U.S. weapons on the way, including those surface-to-air missiles. Obviously, we're talking about the situation between Ukraine and Russia. A lot of breaking news going on throughout the morning. But there's a rise in pressure on Moscow with more economic sanctions from countries around the world. ABC's Mary Alice Parks explains.
This morning, the U.S. and European partners looking to make the Kremlin pay a stiff price for its invasion on Ukraine, announcing another round of severe financial punishments designed to further sever ties between Russian banks and the rest of the world. So at this point, we're talking about the most maximal type of sanctions that we can apply against a major economy that's integrated with not just the European economy, but the global economy. So these are significant. The group of Western countries now moving to bar some Russian banks from the SWIFT system that facilitates foreign transactions. And they're also taking aim at the Russian Central Bank in a major move that could lock up over $600 billion the Russian government has in savings abroad. A senior U.S. administration official telling reporters that Russia's war chest of foreign reserves is, quote, only powerful if Putin can use it. The White House arguing the ruble will fall even further. And from the public to the very private, jets, yachts and mansions in the U.S. and Europe owned by Russian elites now targets too. The White House promising a new task force to identify, hunt down and freeze the assets of Russian companies and oligarchs who have already been sanctioned. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. So there's a lot of breaking news coming out this morning from the situation in Ukraine and Russia. The first piece of news this morning was that Russia's President Vladimir Putin put nuclear forces on high alert due to aggressive statements. That's right. And in just the last half hour, we learned a Ukrainian delegation will meet with Russian officials for talks on the Ukraine-Belarus border. Clearly a lot going on. And people here at home in San Antonio, they want to help out, too. That is why there's actually a special mass being offered to pray for peace. It's all happening at San Fernando Cathedral this morning. And that's where we find our Jonathan Cotto live. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. Well, not your typical Sunday morning mass here at the San Fernando uh, Cathedral. Inside, just a number of folks here, San Antonio residents, congregated all with one purpose, and that's praying for peace in Ukraine. Now, I did have the opportunity of speaking with Archbishop Gustavo, who says uh, he typically would be in green ahead of Lent this Wednesday, but today his vestment is purple. Purple signifying sorrow, signifying mourning, fasting. And the reason why they're wearing purple is because of the situation in Ukraine. And of course, today the church, the community gathering in prayer, those special petitions inside, the bells tolling right now, all for one reason, one cause, and that's peace in Ukraine. An important detail that I noticed while I was inside the cathedral, a white candle right at the forefront of the cathedral inside, dressed in Ukraine's colors, blue and yellow. And that's the message here from San Fernando Cathedral, peace for Ukraine. Reporting from downtown, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. 837, 40 degrees out. General Motors is trying a new way to generate profits in a non-car way. We'll explain next. And a driver calling police after discovering the brakes on his vehicle didn't work. We have the efforts to try to slow him down all caught on camera. You know what is finally working today, Max? Mm. The sun. Ah. I mean, it's always working. But it's out 40 degrees at 838 this morning. Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday sunny forecast for us when we come back. Russian invasion of Ukraine, Sunday, tracking Putin and the Russian military's next steps and Biden's response. What will this mean for the U.S.? And with cybersecurity concerns, real-time reports inside Ukraine, Sunday on ABC's This Week with George. Well, YouTube is following the, and joining Facebook in its efforts to stop a number of Russian channels from monetizing their social media content. YouTube in, implemented their ban yesterday. Meta, the parent company of Facebook, announced their ban on Friday. YouTube is restricting access to channels like Russia's RT, Russia's 24, and TASS, which Ukrainians view as propaganda. The platform has also removed thousands of videos and violated its policies by engaging in coordinated misinformation campaigns. And just like many other industries, cruise lines that usually stop at ports in Ukraine and Russia will be sailing right past them as war rages on in that region. Norwegian Cruise Line, Regent Seven Seas Cruises, Oceana Cruises, Viking Cruises and Atlas Ocean Voyages are removing stops in St. Petersburg and canceling launches from Kyiv. All right, latest numbers from the Labor Department here at home. Fewer Americans are actually collecting unemployment benefits. Officials with the agency says, according to the latest count, 1,476,000 workers across the United States, they're collecting jobless aid. And here's the thing, that is the lowest number in 52 years. 
Well, General Motors is trying to turbocharge by doing the non-car revenue. The car maker plans to sell 50 new digital features and services by 2026. The new products will help drivers and passengers with tasks like online shopping and car maintenance predictions. Some of the digital features take advantage of larger displays that GM is installing in future electric vehicles. And before we show the video, we want you to know the baby in the video is said to be okay. So just go ahead and take a look at this. A freak accident in Argentina. You are seeing a baby laying in the middle of the street. That baby out, fell out of a moving car and onto the road. The incident captured it all on camera and it shows drivers swerving to avoid hitting that child. A bystander swooped in for the save and medics say the child is in good health. Wow. And speaking of crazy video, dramatic dash cam video of a crash involving a driver whose brakes failed on a highway in Lubbock last week. The driver barely in control at speeds at nearly 100 miles an hour. Police say the driver told them they had no way to slow the car down. The driver tried several methods, could not get the car to stop. Eventually, a police car moved in front of it, tried to use its brakes to slow the vehicle. The driver hit the police car, then another before crashing. Amazingly, the driver suffered only minor injuries. So in both situations, glad to see that the baby was okay and this driver also okay. But wow. That's pretty... <sighs> Hard video to watch there. All oh, right, yeah. it's 41 degrees, Sarah, and the sun, you say, is making its debut. It's coming out. A very clear uh, clearing line is moving across south central Texas, and guys, I'm happy to see the sun. Now, it's not necessarily going to be a warm day today, but it is going to be a sunny day, and that is an improvement in my book. Outside right now, looking at the airport, you're seeing that, right? Sunny skies at the airport, 40 degrees, and there is a stout wind from the north at about 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So it is going to be breezy with that north wind, and temperatures are going to be in the 50s pretty much for most of the day. So cool, but sunny, and that is, again, a welcome change. Take a look at the temperatures out there right now. It's 40 in Hondo, 45 in Castroville, 40 in New Braunfels, 36 at Bernie Stage Airfield. But you can clearly see the clearing line there. It's still cloudy in Southern Bear County, but don't worry. You're about to get the sunshine here in just a few minutes. A wider view and you can see that clearing line even more clearly as it's pushing on down south into Maverick County. But it's sunny out in Del Rio right now, 40 degrees, still freezing in Rock Springs and 34 in Fredericksburg. And again, it is still going to be chilly today, but much warmer than what we've been dealing with over the last few days. Last few days, we've been stuck in the 30s, and we're already seeing temperatures warming up into the 40s out there right now. Winds from the north, as I mentioned, stout, 20 mile per hour sustained wind. We will see gusts of up to 20 to 30 miles, 25 to 30 miles per hour uh, today. And because we're having that stout wind, there's still a wind chill out there. So it feels like it's 30, even though it's 40. It feels like it's 30 in New Braunfels, and it feels like it's in the 20s in Kerrville. Now, once those temperatures get above 50 degrees, there won't be a wind chill, but still a chilly morning, but we are seeing the sun. So I'm trying to find that silver lining here for us, and I think we can all be grateful for the sunshine. By mid-morning, that clearing line will be pushing further south into our coastal communities, and we'll be seeing, all of us will be seeing the sun by about noon and by lunch. And as far as afternoon temperatures go, Here's a look at what it's going to be this afternoon. Right around 60 degrees around the I-35 corridor and up into the Hill Country and the San Antonio metro area. But out west toward Del Rio, 66 degrees for the high temperature. And again, we haven't seen temperatures above 60 degrees since Tuesday of last week when we were in the 80s. We had that strong cold front move through and that kept our temperatures in the 30s uh, throughout uh, several days in a row. So a welcome change here for us. Take a look at today's forecast by 10 will be at 44, 51 at noon, 57 at 2, 60 for that high temperature. North winds today gusting up to 25 miles per hour. If you have evening plans tonight, bring that coat with you because it is going to get chilly very quickly after the sunset shortly after 630. So Saturday, Sunday night plans. Maybe you're going to go to the rodeo for the last night or just enjoy a night out and about. You're going to want that jacket with you. But look at the improvement to high temperatures as we head into uh, the first week of March. We'll be looking at highs in the 70s 
70s and even in the low 70s by the end of the week. Now I do have to say there is a lack of, of rain in the forecast over the next seven days and even though we've had damp conditions since Wednesday, it has not amounted to much. As far as rainfall goes, we've only seen three hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport. Three hundredths of an inch of rain up near Bernie, even less in New Braunfels, two hundredths of an inch of rain and in Seguin, a measly one hundredth of an inch of rainfall. So even though we had that gray weather, it did not amount to much as far as rainfall is concerned. And we are starting to see moderate to extreme drought work its way in from the west. And so in the forecast over the next seven days, yes, beautiful weather, but again, no, no significant chance for rainfall for us. Another thing I want to mention is that early tomorrow morning there will be a light freeze. Temperatures should bottom out right near 32 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. So a cold start tomorrow, a freezing start tomorrow, but after the freezing start tomorrow morning, no more freezes over the next seven days for us and high temperatures will slowly rebound back into the low to mid 70s by the weekend. Max and Sarah, what do you think about the sunshine? I like it. I love it. I want more of it. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. So it is February 27th. Wanted to give a special birthday shout out to my little brothers, Leo and Phil. They're not so little, Max. They're not so little. Are they taller than uh, you? They both are, in fact, <laughs> taller than me. Um, they can't dunk on me, so it doesn't matter. Although right now I can't dunk either, so here we are. And they're but twins. They are twins, Leo and Phil. Happy birthday. And uh, I expect a family FaceTime later. Happy birthday. But for now, 849, 41 degrees out. Well, eating smarter can lead to you being healthier, but do you know what foods are better for your health issues? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about a healthy eating IQ mm. and how to find out what's yours. In the news you need to know before you go, a lot going on between Ukraine and Russia. And this morning, people here at home trying to help out. Archbishop Gustavo holding two special masses, offering San Antonians an opportunity to come together to pray for the peace of the people of Ukraine. A lot of people gathering inside at San Fernando Cathedral, many saying they are working together for peace. This is going on for at least the next seven minutes. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect who stabbed a man in the stomach, then took off. Police say the stabbing happened just before midnight on New Braunfels Avenue at a taco truck. They tell us the victim and the suspect were arguing when the stabbing occurred. The victim was able to get away from his attacker and drove himself to the hospital, according to police. And at last check, he was in serious condition. No suspect has been arrested. What statement did you make by stepping up two divisions? and beating, you know, such a qualified boxer as him. I let the boxing world know that I'm, I'm a future superstar, future pound for pound star, and everyone's talking about it, so I, I believe that paid off. All right, tonight on Instant Replay, Larry Mira is going one-on-one -on -one with San Antonio's newest world champion boxer, Jesse Bam Rodriguez, plus one of boxing's most popular fighters coming to San Antonio in April. The Spurs about to wrap up the rodeo road trip. Greg Simmons is going to get you ready for the Spurs' final opponent tomorrow. Regular season about to begin for San Antonio FC, and they got some new swag, new jerseys to wear this season. We have this so much more tonight. Instant replay right after the night beat. The sun is out in San Antonio. <laughs> it's still chilly, though. 42 degrees at the airport, 43 in New Braunfels. It's 36 at Bernie Stage Airfield and 35 in Kerrville. You can see that clearing line very clearly as it pushes on down to the south. So even though Pleasanton and Gonzalez, you're still in the clouds, you're going to see the sun here shortly. And by the way, even though it's going to be a sunny day, it's still going to be a cool day, just the warmest we've had since Tuesday. We'll be looking at winds from the north gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour in the 50s at noon and right near 60 degrees for the afternoon. A welcome change to see temperatures rising instead of just hanging out in the <laughs> 30s like they had the last few days. It is going to get chilly though tonight. Temperatures will fall after the sunset. We'll be at freezing early tomorrow morning. A light freeze for us. 66 for the high temperature tomorrow and then look as those temperatures improve. Temperatures in the low 70s by the week's end will be in the mid 70s. The one negative part of this forecast is that Drought is increasing and we don't have a chance for rain in the forecast over the next seven days, but I'm celebrating this. <laughs> I'm celebrating I, I call this sunshine. a win too, Sarah. I mean, I, I actually like laid out on the sun on Tuesday. Whoa. I was working from home. And I, when it was in the 80s? Yes. And I was like red and yeah, 
was, and then, yeah. and then this happened in the last four days. <laughs> hey, we don't have the pollen count in yet, but mm -hmm. as soon as we get it, I'll post it on ksat.com. Thank right. you, Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a good Sunday.